my beloved people, as far as the bulletin this morning, of course we continue with Father Graf's book, The Power of Prayer, and I continue to encourage you to read this very carefully each Sunday as it is presented, and that you keep these parts and eventually turn them into the form of a book, however way you rearrange them. Very, very important that we understand this about prayer. Likewise, the uh, two uh, other little instructions that appear in the bulletin from every week, uh, do, again, read those very carefully. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. My beloved people, <clears throat> the year is speeding by, isn't it? We are now in September already. We have hardly begun the year, and we are now at the end of the year. And that is our life, our lives, that are going by just as quickly as that. This morning's gospel has some rather important points that it points that it brings to our attention. The first of all is that our blessed Lord seems to have had an affinity for the Samaritans. Strange. The Samaritans were an evil group. So the Jews maintain. You, a Jew, a good Jew, consider the Samaritans so evil that even the shadow that was cast by a Samaritan was a terrible affliction. That's how bad the Jews thought the Samaritans were. Yet, how much time did our Lord spend with those evil Samaritans? And how often he talked about those evil Samaritans. And he made it a point that he stressed the word Samaritan. This morning, another point. There were several people, several men, that were afflicted by the dread disease of leprosy. And leprosy was and is a dread disease. I understand that it's beginning again to show its face in places throughout the world. They cried out from a distance because they were not allowed to come near healthy people because of the danger of spreading disease. We ourselves, even in today's as we speak, are made aware of the danger of spreading a dread disease, aren't we? And how we must avoid everybody and how clean we must stay and how often we must wash our hands even if we touch a doorknob or touch anybody's hand how we too are extremely disease conscious at this moment contrived or otherwise well these men were calling for help somehow they'd found out about Jesus and they had heard that he was there as he was traveling and they came forth and they were begging him to help them and he did he cured them and he sent them off to go tell the priests about it whatever it was and they did on their way there they were cured one of them only one of them who saw that he had been made clean and that the leprosy was gone only one of those nine turned around and came running back to Jesus Christ fell at his feet and took the time 
and the energy and the devotion and the kindness and the goodness to say thank you. How many of us are always begging? We're always wanting this and always wanting that and always wanting the other. We get it. We pray to the angels. We pray to Saint this and we pray to Saint that and we pray to Saint somebody else. Always begging, always and always and always, morning, noon and night, we are always wanting something. And to, we find ourselves lighting candles and uh, kneeling and prostrating ourselves and begging, begging and begging. We get what we want. How many of us go to the same equal amount of trouble, the same amount of energy, the same amount of determination, the same amount of time to go to our Lord or to the Blessed Mother or to Saint this or Saint that or whoever else and express our thanks. How many of us who have lit the candle of, of petition, of begging, go back later and light another candle in gratitude? How many of us, I receive masses, people send masses to us from all over the world, from all over the world, literally. We have lots of masses. That's why we beg people, please don't send more than one or two masses. And when even you who give your masses, if I may digress for a second, they give you a message, you don't see your intention showing up right away. My beloved people, it's a, a, a principle that I cannot do anything about. It's not, I just can't do anything about this principle because only one can be first. I cannot put everybody first. Would you believe that we have got over 2,000 masses on the books that are yet to be said. People want Gregorian masses, which, by the way, are 30 masses of 30 days in succession. Do you realize that we have about 15 of those on the books? And people are begging today, please accept a Gregorian mass. Well, if you want to wait a year or so, I can say the Gregorian, not me, but somebody here can say the Gregorian Mass. So I appreciate that attitude, but just so I wish for you all to understand my, our predicament as far as Masses go. And as for me myself, I can only say the ones that are listed only for me. The other Masses are assigned once each month to the other fathers who will say the Masses during the month. I have at least 15 or 16 novenas of masses to be said. I can't get to them. And everyone that comes with a mass has a serious, serious intention. Health, health, this problem, marriage, marital, whatever. Thousands of requests from all over the world. But do you know, from all over the world, I believe, I hadn't, I hadn't planned on making this little mathematical uh, occasion out of it this morning, but from all those thousand masses, thousands of masses that we've got for, for petition, I'm guessing probably one-tenth of one percent 
are being said in thanksgiving. We need to thank Almighty God for His goodness to us. It isn't that we're looking for the stipend of this or that Mass. That's ridiculous to say that even. But we must give thanks to God. He gave, we received, then what? These ten lepers today received, he gave, only one. The percentage seems to be pretty much in line. Only one out of ten thought to come back and say thank you. I'm saying this since we are emphasizing prayer. Again, now that uh, our bulletins and instructions can be received before you get them, actually, in many cases, any place in the country, any place in the world. And they're beginning to read about this instruction on prayer. And the question is common. Why hasn't somebody told us about this before? Now that's a sad commentary. We are so busy in arguing and debating and fussing and insisting that the T's are crossed properly and that the dots, that the I's are dotted properly and that the grammar is correct and that this, that and the other is right and so busy condemning, can I use the word, the Samaritans of our day We're so busy. I'm not saying you are. I'm complaining about wherever. We're so busy condemning and condemning and condemning and criticizing and criticizing and, sh and giving a shock reaction about this, that, or the other that we honestly forget to do what we're supposed to be doing. Giving honest worship, honest service, honest gratitude to the Lord our God who has made us clean in this or that or the other fashion. We claim, and the things I tell you, you can certainly repeat them anywhere you want to. But when you do, be sure and say that that's a crazy abbot in Alabama said so. Give me all of the opprobriums. I want them to know that I'm saying these things. They know it. They know it and they criticize us and they criticize me for being so stupid. I care less. Why do we, blessed souls of God, take the time to come to church? Why? Why does anybody take the time to come to church? We ourselves, I'm not speaking of us directly, you know that. We ourselves are out there to say we are the correct ones. We have the truth. We are out to gain the souls of those who are going to hell. We know they're going to hell. We can see it written all over their faces that they're going to hell. They disagree with me, so that's absolutely a sure sign that they're going to hell. And so we talk to them. And we impress upon them to come to Mass where we're supposed to be. So we go, very nervous, very wondering. 
afraid, not knowing what to do. And we approach the church. The minute we hit the door, there's somebody at the door with pencil and paper to find out all about me, my genealogy, what church I've been to, who baptized me, how did he baptize me, what book did he use, what color was the cover of the book. And dozens of other very relevant questions. You know you can't go to communion because um, I don't like the shoes you're wearing. Sounds silly, doesn't it? Try it sometimes. You'll be met at the door. That poor individual with good intention and hope to find a place to go and kneel and say his or her prayers in the presence of his or her God will turn heel and never again return. Who is to blame? Make your own decisions. Only one of these showed up to say thank you. And he was a hated Samaritan. One who was destined for hell. And our Lord made it a point that he spoke out for the Samaritans every chance he got. And he seems to always, no matter if he was going east, west, north, or south, somehow or other his footsteps pulled him through Samaria. It's as if some kind of a magnet was there, which it was that pulled him through Samaria every blessed time. And they loved him because he knew, or they knew, that he loved them. My beloved people, charity. I said a minute ago, I have never said this to you before, but I think you should know what people can say about us as traditional Roman Catholics who have been labeled to be supposedly protectors of the true faith, whatever that is. Here some years ago we had a young man who approached us to join the house as a monk. And, of course, in the course of time, we asked questions and became informed. He had been a Protestant, converted to Catholicism. And he went to the church available at the time. And he said, I went to that church and they taught me and their lessons were how to love. As time went on, I discovered that there was something not right about that church and that I was still looking, trying to find the church where I could truly give worship to God in the way that God has always, throughout the centuries, wanted. And I find, found, finally found the traditional Catholic Church. And I started going there. And lo and behold, I was taught how to hate I don't think I could say anything more dreadful than that.
I don't think it's possible to say anything more dreadful than that. Blessed people, you know why I call you blessed? Because you are blessed. And as I stand here and look in your faces, I see blessedness. And blessedness cannot hate. Blessedness is not supposed to hate. And my job before God and our job before God is one and one only. And that is to demonstrate one way or another by example, word, movement, anything at all, charity. Charity, charity, charity. No matter if you have the faith to move a mountain, if you have charity, my beloved people, you are nothing, and I am nothing too. You can bring this attention to the attention of anybody you know, no matter what his rank or position in life might be. You come here, and you bring here with you. Well, I always urge you to bring here with you. You can't have the Mrs. Sacrament in your own homes, but you can have everything possible under the Blessed Sacrament in your own homes. And that's what I want you to bring, the Spirit the atmosphere, the weather of heaven into your houses, into your homes. And if you do that, then we here have preached the right sermon. We are in the most dreadful times, I'm not going into that, in the most dreadful times ever. And it is time for us, if we, are, if we acknowledge the fact, if I insist that I am the last true Roman Catholic on earth, as so many do elsewhere, if I insist upon that, then it is over. Isn't it? But I will insist that the number is few. And that our Lord himself did say, did ask when I return, will I find faith on earth? So do you know, do you realize that you, plus others of your same inclination, wherever, that it's down to us you know when you use a funnel it starts big and wide and it comes down to a small spigot you are the spigot my beloved people and you have a right a God given right to be given the truth and you have a right God given right to guard that truth according to the objective reality of faith and belief and that is that and that no man can come to you and tell you do it the way I tell you to do it If you don't do it the way I tell you to do it, and to believe it, and to observe it, 
that you are in error and therefore you will go to hell because you have disobeyed me. Don't laugh at that. Don't laugh at that. Because that's being done. That's evil and that's wrong. And anybody with walking sense knows that. You have a right, a God-given right, to carry that faith of Jesus Christ in your hearts. And don't you let anybody disturb that. And for example, all the causes that we can conjure up to disturb the pure faith today in today's gospel. Did our Lord question that poor, miserable, evil Samaritan who came back and said, thank you? Did he put into the test at the beginning? What do you believe? You can't do this. You are a Samaritan. You are evil. You are this. You are that. You don't believe like I believe. Did he use any such language? When all of the others, when the little, poor little woman on her knees dragging on the, in the streets, and who's passing by, dragged herself up to him merely to touch his garment and saying to herself, if I would just touch his garment, I will be healed. And so she was. And when he stopped and said, who asked, who touched me? Did he ask her all kinds of questions? Did he say, how dare you, evil woman, to touch my holy robes? Did he ask that? Did he ask her any question at all, except one? He simply said, do you believe? Your faith has healed you. That's all. It's as simple as... It's as simple as that. Why do we have to complicate it and make it impossible for those who need to believe? Beloved people, the clock says I've got to quit. So I've got to quit. But you see, I talk to you. I have nobody else to talk to. I talk to you all, not because you need it. The ones that are right are always the ones that hear about it. The ones that are wrong are never there to hear it. That's the way it goes. You keep the faith no matter. You hold on to that faith because that is your life. That is my life. Only one came back, and of all the people on earth, what percentage are you that have come here to say not only thank you, but to say, I love you. Nothing else matters. I love you. This is what I want each of you to go home with. You want peace? Bring that home with you. I love you. Beloved people of God.